Hello guys and welcome to your second daily blues of the January transfer window. It's me again, at Louis the Bugalo on Twitter, and it has come. Louis the Bugalo, the Bugalo YouTube channel is here. I will leave a link down in the description, but right now I am joined by Mr. Max Perry of the 12th Man. How are you doing, my friend? I'm not too bad, thank you. Love the enthusiasm. I know, right? That's what, exactly what Dan was saying yesterday, but you know... Live and breathe it. January transfer window or general transfer windows, love them to bits. But anyway, let's get on with the news. We have one story at first coming from Mr. Max Perry, even though you just muted yourself. Come on, mate. What have we got for us? Um, what one are we doing first? Should we start on the loan spell? Considering, obviously, I'm sure you went over it a few days ago, Patrick Bamford has returned from Crystal Palace on loan. Whether this means he will... Go into the first team and play a few games or he will be sent back online. I know the odds are quite high for him to go back to Middlesbrough, but onto the next player as, as well, it has been released today, I think it was, that Christian Atsu is returning to Chelsea. His loan spell with Bournemouth has been terminated. Whether or not, again, that means he will get first team football. Apparently, he is being put into the first team. Whether or not he's uh, eligible for tomorrow, I'm not sure, but it would be good to even see him on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's just a case that I'm a bit worried about that because he wasn't getting much playing time at Everton. He's not going to get much playing. He wasn't getting much playing time at Bournemouth, clearly. How is he going to fit into the equation at the bridge? Um, obviously, we don't need more attacking players. We don't need more wide players. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, obviously, he's a guy with a bit of pace. So if we need that injection of pace halfway through a game, I think he might come in useful there. Um, but like I'm saying, we, 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 we're, se we're severely oh, we're overdoing it with attacking players. Me and Dan were saying this yesterday. I mean, uh, with well, there's nothing else that's come out about Alex Texera uh, of Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, there's no more news that's come out about him today, so I don't know if that's um, a, dead, a, dead, a dead end at all. But um, obviously, um, we, I, we've, we, we've got a, we're overdoing it with attacking players. If you look at it, we've got Oscar, Willian, Hazard, Pedro. Those are just the full starters. There are many, many other players that we have in that squad which are going to be used for attacking flair. Uh, and I think we're, we're really overdoing it there. What's your opinion on it? Um, well, personally, the way I was looking at it was it may shine a light on the fact that this isn't going to be as exciting a January transfer window as many Chelsea fans would hope. Bringing back two loan players means that our wage bill is realistically going to increase, which could mean that uh, the manager isn't serious about going out and signing players uh, full term because obviously as we said in a earlier stream I wouldn't be surprised if the the club the board don't give Hiddink a lot of money considering he is uh, the caretaker manager as such um, so they're not going to give him a lot of money because a new manager that comes in might not like the players that he buys so recording loan players definitely is is pointing in the direction that it's not going to be as busy as busy a January transfer window as a lot of Chelsea fans would like to see yeah well yeah that's 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 I hadn't thought about that. That's a really really good point you've raised there. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, we're going to struggle uh, in terms of attracting players without Champions League football. Um, there are clubs like Arsenal which can attract them with Champions League football and the opportunity to live in London. We've just got the opportunity to live in London, which any team could offer. I mean, it looks like Crystal Palace will get European football. Arsenal are going to have European football. We're going to be there and thereabouts, I believe. Might, might not be. West Ham might even get European football, but we'll be there thereabouts with West Ham. Spurs um, are looking good. Spurs. I forgot about Spurs because, you know, I don't like them, but, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, Spurs. Spurs are obviously going to have European football. They might get a top four. So they probably will. Um, so, you know, there are all these players which can be attracted. Uh, we always got other players out on loan, um, such as I've just seen in the comments, Mohamed Salah, uh, Tim Davies. He's never going to come back. He, I don't think he will. I think he could, he should be one of those players that's offloaded. I think him and Cuadrado, despite the fact they're absolutely killing it in the Italian league, I just don't think they're. Um, I think they're too lightweight for the Premier League, and I think there'll be two players that uh, will be going out the door. Um, so let's move on to our next topic of transfer news, which is about the main man, which has been put in the title, Mr. Jackson Martinez. Now, as you can tell. Uh, we are severely lacking up front at the minute. I mean, Diego, he did score a couple of goals, uh, but we haven't really got many other options. You know, Dami and Dan were saying yesterday, uh, Radamel Falcao, he obviously looks like he might be on the way out or he has another. he's hampered by another injury. Uh, and Loic Remy is proving uh, to be injured quite a lot as well. 
and he also might be out on his way to on loan to Aston Villa. Uh, so Mr. Jackson Martinez is a player which Gus Hiddink is thinking of having a look at. Uh, you know, we are really desperate uh, for firepower at the minute uh, and it could lead to uh, for us to bid to, for two strikers in the window, one of which we spoke about yesterday in Brie and Bolo from Basel. However, this man here is a proven striker. Uh, the odds have been slashed, apparently, for Jackson Martinez to come to Stamford Bridge this month. Uh, he's not getting much playing time out in uh, Atletico Madrid. Uh, he's not really fit in the system and I think they're looking to offload him. Uh, Potentially, though, however, they could be asking for Diego Costa in return to um, go, obviously go back to Atletico Madrid. Uh, he's just scored two goals in 12 games for, in, in the league of the season. And he, he he's very unsettled, it's saying here, on, in the Telegraph. I'll probably leave a link to this down in the description where we read this. Uh, his contract was in 2019. However, we could be trying to tempt him to come to Stamford Bridge. Uh, obviously, Jackson Martinez... Uh, had a great few seasons at Porto. Uh, he's obviously made this big move to see what he can do. And in La Liga, he's proven that maybe he can't cut it. I don't. You don't really know if he because he's not really had long enough to prove himself. He's not been given an extended run of games. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, Max? Uh, Jackson Martinez potentially comes to Chelsea. Um, I think he would be a, be a quality signing because obviously he has been frozen out by uh, Anton Griezmann playing up front and the formation that Atletico Madrid have chosen to play. Um, he does suit the Premier League very well in my eyes. Obviously, he's big, he's strong, he's got a very good turn of pace. Um, he's not as much of a hothead as Diego Costa is, which will be a positive. Um, I, I think he could be a quality player, and I, I do think that if there is a league that he is best suited to, it will more than likely be the Premier League. Um, I must say, though, I'm not entirely um, pleased about the idea of maybe sending Costa out to Atletico Madrid on, in return. I still think uh, Costa would be the sort of way forward and I don't think that would realistically be a fair swap but signing him signing him would be good I think like he, he does seem like a quality player he's not he's not on par with some of the players that have been mentioned recently but we're just where we are at currently I think we've got to take what we can get we're realistically not going to get players like Bamiang players like uh, Griezmann for example the only problem that I see with it would he be cup tied if we were to play in the Champions League yes he would be I believe he would be yeah so that's the only problem. That's, that, is, that is the issue with obviously signing Jackson Martinez. But I think uh, it's a case of, I think the club are really looking to probably maybe push a bit more for European places in the Premier League. Because uh, let's face it, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm not saying we, we're not, we're, I'm not saying we're going to lose. But I can't see us getting past PSG with the team we have and the team that they now have. I mean, Di Maria, um, arguably one of the worst signings of the 2014 window has been one of the best signings of the 2015 window in the summer uh, for PSG. Uh, and he's leading assists over in France. Um, and he's playing alongside the likes of Thiago Silva. Uh, and then you've got, obviously, Pastore, who's another Argentinian who's performing really well. Uh, Lavezzi, Lucas. You know, there's, this team is a really, really good side. Uh, and we they just about scraped it last season. And we were this was when we were at our peak. Um and we're not our pick at the minute. We're looking fairly down and out, despite the fact we perform well uh, in the Champions League. But I just can't see us getting past them. And I don't think, I think that may be why we're looking at Jackson Martinez, because even though he still be cup tied, I think they're only thinking he'll be cup tied for a couple of games. Obviously, they're not going into it thinking they're going to lose, but they're looking, you know, with the, with the potential that we could possibly lose uh, in the round of 16 of the Champions League. Uh, I think they're looking to bring in a striker who could, you know, maybe because Diego's been off form this season. And it, I, I know I, I keep saying that he's been off form, but he scored two goals uh, against Watford. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll see. We'll have to see how he performs tomorrow. Um, but I, I think that, you know, maybe this could be potentially a big move. I've seen people saying, you know, if he's not doing well in the Liga, he will not do well in the Premier League. But you've stated it yourself. Uh, he's big. He's a big guy. He's, you know, his physical nature, he's got a physical nature to his game. Uh, I think that potentially this could be an excellent signing for Chelsea. Um, and, you know, obviously Remy will go move further down the pecking order, which is possibly not what we want. Uh, you know, if it comes, worse comes to worse, I think we should consider using him as a wide player because uh, he, he can score goals. Um, but obviously there's obviously people talking about Oscar again. Um, so, you know, maybe we might end up going to top top. We might uh, change formation up. But, um, you know, this is it's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens if we do sign him, if he does come in. 
Um, there's obviously, like you're saying, there's Griezmann. There was a lot of talk about that in the summer. Obviously, Antoine Griezmann. And then you had uh, the Aaron Gies guy, John Stones, all these players which were talked about, which did not come. Uh, evidently, I don't think we'll sign Griezmann. I think Griezmann wants Champions League football. I think he's settled at Atletico Madrid. He's only been there a season. He signed a long-term contract. I don't think there's any chances of getting him. So I think moving forward, their second-choice striker is a good idea. Um, I know as a club with our financial power, we should be competing to sign players of that calibre. You know, obviously Barcelona, Real Madrid could possibly be looking at Antoine Griezmann. We should be competing with them. But if we're looking at our current situation where we are not guaranteed Champions League football, I do not think that the likes of Paul Pogba, um, you know, uh, Griezmann uh, would not want to come to a club like Chelsea right now. Obviously, we're going to have to look uh, and see what we can do. Possibly Jackson Martinez could help us push for top four next season. Um but I think we're going to move on to our next piece of transfer news. I believe that comes from you, Mr. Perry. Uh, Mr. Alex Tellers of Inter Milan. What have you got for me on that? Yes, obviously, um, he is a left-back from Galatasaray, 23 years old. And it's supposed to be around 6.25 million. I know that's his current buyout option. Um, I don't really understand this rumour because, obviously, we've currently got... Um, sort of surplus left-backs in the sense that Bubba Arman just hasn't really had a seeing. So I don't really understand why we'd need to buy another left-back, whether or not he's trying to sort of get Ivanovic out the side and move as been equated towards the right and doesn't uh, think Bubba Arman is the right man for the job or even just sort of like a backup uh, left-back and he wants to bring someone new in. Um, I personally think this would be disappointing to see. As I've said, with the fact that we're bringing back so many loan players, it is going to increase our wage bill. And I think this would be a waste of sort of like the whole financial fair play and the fact that the more people we have in, the less people we can go and sign. And it might seem like only 6.25 million, but the effect it's going to have on the wage bill and who we can then bring in, I think it's definitely not the right way forward. Same as what we saw in the summer with the signings of uh, Digital Borgi, who I would like to see go out on loan personally in January. With the fact that he's played, I think, roughly like two minutes against Walsall, I think it was, at the end of the game. Um, I didn't even, we couldn't even watch that game either. It wasn't televised. No, that's it. He, he literally played a couple of minutes at the end of that game. And then he's sort of bringing in about 60k a week. And if he could go out and learn, I think that good, especially with the fact we're bringing in so many loan players back. But yeah, personally, I, I don't think that's the way forward. Defensively, we definitely need to look at centre-backs. That's, that's definitely the way forward. Whether or not this guy is able to play as a centre-back, whether or not he's versatile, I'm not too sure. I'm not personally an expert on the guy. What do you know about him? All I know is he was fairly decent on FIFA with a lot of the players that we're being rumoured and linked with. Um, I, I, I try and follow uh, La Liga and stuff as much as I can, or the bigger other li leagues in Europe. Um, I, can't, I, I used to watch a lot of it, um, but I, I don't really um, follow uh, the Italian league because it's awful basically. Um, it's boring football. I don't really like to watch it. Um, but obviously, I, I don't know very much about him at all. Um, I read a bit of it about him uh, like yesterday, I think, because um, I saw I saw that rumour yesterday as well. But today it started to gather pace, so I thought we'd cover it today. Um, and I read a bit about him and he, he, says, he's, he says he's quick and he's quite physical. Um, personally, I think it's what we're looking to do with, you know, move Ivanovic out of the side or possibly bring him in as another centre-back option, because um, he gets done for pace every time on that right-hand side. Move Aspilicueta onto the right and have the choice of Bubba Rahman or Alex Tellez uh, as our left-backs. I don't think uh, Alex Tellez will be a great signing. There's a lot of people in here which have been saying it, and I agree with a lot of them. I think if we're going to do this, we've already brought back two lone players, bring back a third and bring Nathan Aki into the side. Um, he's killing it at Watford. Absolutely killing it. He's, he's a pivotal part of their team. Uh, and potentially he could come into the Chelsea side and, you know, really, really do a job. Um, I, I, so I don't really see the point of this signing because um, obviously, like you're saying, we've got all these players out on loan. I think it's now is the time to utilise them considering we are not going to attract the big name players that we wish we could. Um, but, you know, what can I say? Um, it, it's, it's always an honour to be linked with such. Obviously, this kid's apparently, he's, a, he's got a lot of potential. Um, so it's always good to have uh, a look at these young players, see what potential we have. Uh, but there are so, 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 so many players uh, in our loan system which we could bring back. Obviously, you've got Atsu. We're talking, if we could talk about forwards again, 
Bamford's come back, you've got Christian Atsu, you've got P.I.'s on out on loan, who was tipped to be the next big thing when we signed him from Sao Paulo. Um, and you've got so many other players. You've got, obviously, Bertrand Traore, who's rotten on the bench at Chelsea at the minute. And even one of our scouts has said, you know, he's wasted there. Why don't we play him? Completely Kennedy great. as well. Kennedy. And you've got, obviously, you've got all these other players at loan. It's not even worth listing them. There are so many of them. You could, like like someone was saying yesterday, you can make a B team out of it. You've got uh, Nathan on loan at Vitez. You've got Dominic Solanke on loan at Vitez. Isaiah Brown on loan at Vitez. You've got all these amazing, great youth players who could come into our side and I reckon do a job. Thomas Callas out on loan on Middlesbrough along with, I think it's Kenneth Amuru. I don't know his first name. I know Amuru's out there though as well. Um, but, you know, there's all these great youth players out on, out on loan which could potentially come in and do a better job than the current first team we have. Uh, I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek, even, we, even though he's not out loan, he's rotten on the bench. And, you know, I think he could do a better job than Matic in the midfield, maybe partner with Mikel, maybe partner with Ramirez. You know, I think we've got so many options in midfield that these players aren't going to look in. I don't necessarily think we're bringing back the right loan players as well, to be honest with you. Mm. I, th- I think maybe someone like Victor Moses would have been quality to bring back. The power yeah. that he has yeah. would have been just absolutely amazing to have up front. Bertrand Traore just should be in there. Like, mm. Imagine having Moses and Bertrand Traore just having a go up front because they've got the passion uh, to sort of to do a job and they're not as uh, complacent as Diego Costa has seemed to be this season because that's sort of been the main problem with him. He has to look very complacent in front of goal. Like he hasn't quite been there. He's not really putting in the amount of effort that we saw him put in last season. So... I, I really don't think Atsu was the way forward. Bamford, I'd like to see be given a go, but I'm I'm adamant he will more than likely go back to Middlesbrough. And I hear that apparently the odds are quite hard for it to be a permanent deal, which I think would be, would be very disappointing. It would be very disappointing. There's other players out online. Chelsea Fram Reviews just made a very, very good point. Marco Van Ginkel, creative player. We bought into Fabregas. He's not going to get a look in. He was, going, he was doing really, really well, and then he got that injury, and now he's not going to get a look in. It's just, we have all these young players who, you know, should be playing. And then even if, even if they're not young and out alone, Victor Moses, you made such a great call there because the guy was absolutely killing it in pre-season. Pre-season, absolutely he was ridiculous, yeah. He, Why he didn't say on, I don't understand. That he was, was disgusting. He was, without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, our best player that pre-season. Definitely. And when he came on in for the Community Shield, even though he didn't do a lot, our best player, one of our best players in that game. It's I, just the power that he shows. Mm. He, he doesn't stop. And, and it's so great to see, like, as I've said with Costa, not just Costa, more or less the whole sort of attacking, our whole attacking force, you've got like Fabregas, Oscar, Hazard, have all just looked so complacent in front of goal. Um, having someone like that and just giving youth players a chance and powerful youth players like that, they can challenge someone like the biggest and strongest centre-backs in the league, I think will be absolutely great. And the fact that we, the fact that we have this at the club and aren't using it, to me, is one of the most painful things. Mm. It's the fact that with those youth players, they will play with no fear. And if you play with no fear, yes, you will make mistakes. You saw it at Stoke with uh, Traore. You was obviously at that game. Traore, yeah. absolutely unbelievable, wasn't he? No, no fear, no fear. Yeah. Run straight. You know, he, I know, I know. I moan about it when Pedro does. He would just run, put his head down, and goes. He's, you know, he 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 does it, but he doesn't look up for the pass, and he loses the ball. That for a guy of his caliber, that's why you get annoyed. And you, that you would have expected him to maybe have learned that, you know, that's not how it works. But obviously, he's probably going to still be trying to find his feet in the Premier League because, you know, he wasn't really a regular starter, I thought, uh, under Mourinho. I thought he, he was in the side in like maybe every other game, but he wasn't given a solid set of, you know, 10 games to really get his feet under the table because obviously he had Oscar Hazard and Willian as our three main uh, striking uh, or mid three main attacking midfield options. Um, but I think, you know, Bertrand Traore, you know, get, should, should we do this now? Okay. Uh, Max, let, let's try and make a team out of all these youth players and players who are on loan that aren't getting an opportunity that potentially could start for Chelsea. I know, I know this could be made into another video, but yep. we talk about it and we never do it. Let's just go on, do it now. Um, so we got, you got Blackman. Jamal Blackman. Blackman. Yeah, okay. He's not that great, but, you know, he, he hasn't really gone out on loan because he's our third string. I don't yeah. think he's really going to get an opportunity. So, yeah, kind of move him to one side. Nathan Ake at left back. Kalas yeah. at centre back. And uh, the one that we put on to Redden. What was his name? Michael the one Hector. that we signed. There you go, Hector. He was a centre back, wasn't he? He doesn't even start at Redden, though. I don't know why we signed him. Because he doesn't well, even yeah. start at Redden. That's another one. So, Kalas in. 
Kalas Omuru, Nigerian international. Yes, that's a shout actually. Kenneth well, Omuru, Kalas. Remind me what position uh, Christiansen plays in. Centre back. Okay, so he, he could he move, be in there. You could put Kalas at right back to move Christiansen into centre back. He apparently he's quite overrated though. But he's is he on loan at Munchen Gladbach, I believe. I yeah, I think he might be right there. Uh, okay, so you've got obviously you got those four. Uh, and then you got Blackman in goal. You know that's that's right. That's a pretty solid team. I know you could be talking about yeah, they might be bottom top half of the championship, bottom half of the Premier League. But that's pretty much where we are right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think these players could do a hell of a lot more than some of these top caliber quality players that won the league last season because those players just don't seem to care anymore. But anyway, are we going to run a four four two or are we going to run a one man up top? You're cool. Um. Go for two strikers up top. Two strikers up top? Okay, so yeah. four man midfield. Either. Lanky and Traore for me. I'm, I'm sorry I've gone ahead, but yeah. Okay. Four four midfielders. Uh, this is just a start on 11. We could build a whole squad out. Lost the cheek, Moses, Lost Nathan cheek, and Piazon. Then you've got two wingers, an attacking midfielder and a defensive winger. There you go. So that's your four in midfield. Easy. Two yeah. up front, Bamford, Bert Traore. Okay. Nice. Also, you've got Solanke as well, who deserves a shout after like 40 so, so, goals last season. Exactly, exactly. Dominic Solanke. And, like, I mean, is he, is he if you had it in front of you and like genuinely thought about it, you could probably even push for a third team, realistically, couldn't you? Like, you, you could even have like a sub bench for the A team and the B team with the amount of like surplus players as well. It's ridiculous. How depressing is that? But that B team still like, I reckon that they'd easily at least be in the same position that we're in now. There's, there's another, yeah, there's another couple of players which people have mentioned. Uh, Nate, uh, is it Lewis Baker and uh, yes, Islam Farouz. Chabola, he's not really pushing for the team at uh, Napoli. But obviously he could maybe be a potential partner to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Oh, Brown. I completely forgot about Brown. Oh, yeah, I, said, I said, is he Brown? I said him. Oh, right. um, there's all these great players. Um, yeah, okay. Bakary, whatever your name is. Cool. Thumbs up. Um, you obviously... Van Hinkle as well. Yeah, Van Hinkle, of course. Um, you've got all these great players. All these great players. Charlie Masunda, that's another one. Yes, of course. Jeez. They're, they're just players that realistically just should be given a chance. And I, I, I really don't think Atsu was a way forward with who we brought back, definitely. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I, I'm not going to make a judgment call. Um, oh, no, of course. Before... Uh, I've seen what he can do. If he comes into the side uh, for a, I don't know half a game and he pro- he does really well, um, then we'll have we'll have to see. We'll have to think about it. Um, Either that or H- Hitting has just brought players in to challenge first team players and maybe want them to push for their spot more. That might even be it. It could be it, but I reckon it could work as well. Um, oh yeah, definitely. The pace that he has is just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, he's I, I, here's, here's another Pas- Pasalic. Um, yes. He's supposed to do Jeremy Boger. Yep. Why do we get on? Uh, Isaac Ozel22 says, as a Ghanaian, I'll have to admit that Atsu is not the greatest. Okay. Um, so he, he plays in there. Yeah, I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, I, if you put it down in the comments, mate, uh, does he start for your national team or was he usually in the squad? Uh, I know he wasn't the World Cup. Uh, and he didn't look that great then, but you know we'll have to see what happens. But um, anyway, let's move on. So he's got Marin as well, yeah. Mark, yeah, he's not. He was. He's not that great though. I, I, I didn't think, realize he was still on loan. I, I, I know. I think the players that probably should be uh, moved out possibly should be um, Marco Marin. Uh, Quadrado is never going to get back into that side, even though he is killing it in the Definitely. Italian league. Salah isn't going to get back into that side, even though he's killing it in the Italian league. Um, he had that great start, didn't he, when we signed him in that January? He had that brilliant second half of that, that season. That against Arsenal, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, there was, was the composure that, that he showed in that finish. Yeah. And then he just... He I remember just, seeing him score that and thinking, he is composed in front of goal. Against a team like Arsenal in like one of his first games in the Premier League and he sort of does something like that, I thought, this kid's definitely sort of going to do something special but what can you do Mm. yeah but um, anyway let's quickly move on to tomorrow Uh, I have done a preview 
but Max was very adamant that he would like to give his views on tomorrow as well. Uh, so we will be doing a second preview for you guys uh, for the Christmas Palace game. We'll spend just, five minutes on it. Just, just, just what, five, five minutes? I don't know. We, can, we might be able to spend a little bit longer on it. I reckon we can stretch. Yeah, go on. Time we have. Yeah, Repeat go your on. views for the go people on. that do um, There's one thing I do want to put straight. Um, on the notes that I made, I made a very, very, very big mistake where I said Connor Wickham was killing it for Crystal Palace. He really, really, really wasn't. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's one mistake I made. Uh, but apparently he might be out. Yannick Balassi might be out. They have Wilfred Zaha still, though. Um, so, uh, either way, whoever's there, it's going to be a difficult game because they're sitting pretty high in the table at the minute. Um, so, it's going to be very, 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 very difficult to um, go and face them at their own ground as well. Um, what are your thoughts on it, mate, uh, overall? You're muted, Max. Um, I've, I'm, I'm nervous about it. As I've said, doing previews is so difficult to do, it's, it's especially away at a side like Palace, who have had a very good season and done us in the first game. Um, in their game at Sanford Bridge this season, 2-1, and just like made us look like we were absolutely fucking dreadful, which we went on to prove throughout the season. But um, it's definitely going to be a big challenge. It is quite a daunting ground. Uh, they're quite a physical side that where they can be. Attacking-wise, they've got some quality, quality players. Um, the thing is, I don't want to keep saying, like, oh, I'll take a draw, because we've sort of, on average, just over. Wait, wait, what, mate? You cut out. There was something weird happened to your mic. Sorry. Um, yeah, so saying that we'll take a draw at this stage, just realistically, it wouldn't be a bad result, but looking at the fact that we're averaging at about a point a game, it just can't keep going on like this. We need to go out and prove... Prove a point, need to go out and definitely get them three points. It's getting more and more important every game. And I definitely does I definitely think that's gonna be extremely difficult to do tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be difficult to get a draw, let alone a win, I think. Um obviously the players are starting to settle, be a bit more, oh, let's play. Um, because they were like that against Watford, despite the fact that Oscar's penalty is still travelling. See it out of my window just now, keeps going. I see it every time I do a stream, every time I'm hundred percent. You just see Oscar's ball flying through the air. Um, so obviously we could have got three points there. Um, we haven't had that luck, and I know I'll keep saying it. We just haven't had that luck this season. Um, but I think you know these players are starting to find their feet again. Three-one uh, against Sunderland, and then you had that two-two draw with Watford, uh, and then that not such great result in between. Uh, and I, just, oh, I don't know. It's just I don't know really, really what to think going into this game. Uh, I want to say that we're going to win. Oh, you know what? I think we will. I'll say we're going to win. Um, Your yeah, ankle boy is apparently out, isn't he? As well, he's suspended for the game. That's that's what I'm reading in the comments here. Apparently, your ankle boy is out as well. Yeah. Um, so you know, they they are severely lacking up front and attacking. So this is where we should really, really start to maybe try and give it a give it a go. Um, obviously, you've got this really, really strong uh, defensive unit. You've obviously, you've got Yedinak. You've got Scott Dan. Um, and then you've got some other players like Delaney, who are, you know, they're doing, they're doing okay this season. I mean, Scott Dan's been absolutely outstanding, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, I, I think we, we don't, like this, this guy here, uh, Keith Fitzsimmons, uh, says, lads, we have no excuse. We really, really have to take advantage. And he's right. I think we should take advantage of this whole situation. I really do. Um, but, who would you um, play? Obviously, Mikel definitely deserves to be in the side after the game against Man United, in my eyes. Definitely, definitely. I forgot, when Man United. I forgot about flaming Man United. Oh, Jesus. You know, how did Matic miss that? Let's go back. <laughs> We're still on that. Uh, I just, like, there's two games where we could have got three points and two times we missed it and screwed up. We could be six points better, well, four points better off than we were. And we are now. Um, so, obviously, this is going to prove to be extremely difficult. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a difficult situation, difficult game. Um, but, you know, that's obviously what I think. Uh, what would be your starting line-up tomorrow, mate? Because I've seen a few. Uh, one guy here, uh, Adu Fatty, says we shouldn't play 4 2 3 one Do you think we should go to strikers tomorrow? Potentially. As I've potentially, said, like I think it's extremely important that we do change the formation. Like, why bring in a manager 
who plays realistically a very similar lineup as well as the exact same formation. It, it just makes no sense. Like, why sack Mourinho and then the manager literally does exactly the same to me, blows my mind. So I, I definitely think we need to change the formation up. Personally, I'd like to see Corsair and go, obviously. Uh, Zuma definitely deserves to be in the team. I think Cahill is still injured, isn't he? So I don't know. Let's let's just get up because just just now. Let's just, I know this is something we really should have done beforehand. Yeah. Um, is Cahill but, still injured? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, don't go just yet. Even though match of the day is on, just just putting that out there, uh, please. Um, <laughs> we will let you go so you can you sort of just about catch up eventually. Um, we'll do our formation, then we'll yeah we'll end it. We'll, yeah, then we'll shut up. Uh, okay. So, team news. Gary Hale is expected to shake off a minor ankle injury, but Lloyd Remy is doubtful and Radmel Valcao misses out again. Uh, I am reading in the comments that apparently Cahill is back as well, yeah. yeah. Hilling said Cahill has a chance. Um, I, I don't see any rush getting him in the side. If he has a chance and he's sort of like just about back, I, I think there's no rush. Zuma looked absolutely amazing against Man United, in my opinion. So, as I said, Courtois, Zuma, Terry... Uh, as for the Quater, I don't, I, I don't really want to see Ivanovic in there considering he was absolutely like, oh, I'm trying to think of a more polite word to use. Um, didn't play very well against Man United. Just was absolutely mm. done on that right side. Um, but he will more than likely get chosen, unfortunately, because, you know, as we said, Bubba Rama just isn't getting a C in. So pretty standard ball. Um, personally, I'd like to say, see Loftus-Cheek and Mikel. I'd like to like us to try that. I think Matic obviously didn't have a great game. That's great. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't, I just, so are we going? Are we going with two up top, or are we going with three up top here? I think you know what I would be interested to do. I'd like to try Bamford up top with partnered. You'll put Bamford Diego. straight in. I think it might. Be. I, 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 I think it would be fair. I, think, I think like yeah. like like we're saying that we that, that their attacking options are. You know, they haven't really got their starting choices. They haven't got Balassi. They haven't got Connor Wickham. They yeah. haven't got... Um, who, who's the other guy? They haven't got Kabai. They haven't got Kabai. So, they, you know, that those three, you know, they were a pinnacle to their game. Even if Connor Wickham wasn't scoring, scoring, he still had an effect on the game in some way or another. Um, obviously, while we're here and we're talking about Palace, guys, go check out Palace Fan TV. Um, some great, got some great Crystal Palace content. It's, a, it's run by Jim Daly, really, really great guy. Um, so go check that out as well, because uh, they will be. Dan is also on there doing a preview uh, for 100% Chelsea on Palace Fan TV for the game tomorrow. Uh, so go check that out. Um, I'll leave a link to the channel down in the description, along with the 12th man, um, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I, I think obviously starting two up top would be um, pre pretty. I, I, It'll be controversial starting uh, Bamford, who didn't get a scene in the Palace side against Palace. And then imagine if he goes and scores. Just that on the back page would be incredible. But um, I think it's highly unlikely. It would make sense if you are going to send him back out alone or sell him to give him maybe one chance, which might even help us in the sense that he would then sort of have to sort of go out and play well. But um, yeah. Who would you play on the wings? Are we having technical difficulties? We are. Okay, um, sorry about that. There was technical difficulties. I know Louis will be um, coming in very soon. I will read your comments now just to keep it going. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go past all the technical difficulties comments. Okay, Harsh Lahiri says, Pedro and William on the wings, Hazard in the centre. Uh, personally, I think William works better in the centre rather than... Uh, Hazard, obviously, we have tried playing Hazard as a false nine. Personally, I just don't think it works. 
Innovate boy says Matic needs to be dropped. As we did say, uh, we think Mikel and Loftus Cheek would be good to have in the middle. Uh, Matic definitely that game against Man United just wasn't very good. Like the, how he even missed that, I, I don't really understand. Uh, let's scroll up for some more comments. Okay, Gerpet Singh says, the thing is, though, I don't want to see either one of Pedro, Hazard or William dropped. Personally, I don't really understand that because obviously Pedro and Hazard haven't really been great. Uh, putting Pedro in a side to me just wouldn't be right. But the fact that he has just been awful. Um, I'd personally much rather see Oscar in now. I think he deserves a chance. Uh, Umar Amin, Begovic deserves another chance. I do agree. The fact that he was sort of frozen out of that side when Courtois came back did sort of seem quite unfair. Uh, Ramirez does deserve a shout as well. He has played fairly well this season, but again, I think after the game Mikel had on uh, Monday, definitely, definitely means that he should, without doubt, be in the side and having someone like Lost of Cheek in there as well. They could work well together and it would be nice to see. Uh, Lewis Gallon says, we should recall Ake and then play him over Iv Ivanovic and play Dave on the right. Um, I do agree, but Ake is sort of moving into like a defensive midfielder role at Watford from what I've seen. So whether or not he will struggle coming back into the left-back spot, I don't know. I'm still waiting for Louis. Let's see if he's coming back. I'll send him a message. I know you'll love Louis and you want to see him and he raises some good points. Let's see. Anyway, guys, leave your score predictions in the comments. Let me know. I'll read them out. We'll see. Are you all... Um, Quite nervous about the game tomorrow. Do you think that we can win? Or do you think it will be another draw if we can pick up any points at that? Gerpet Singh as well. Kennedy as a centre forward. I think that would be risky considering we're not even giving him a chance in the team. Uh, putting him as a centre forward and just trying something completely different just doesn't seem right to me. But I definitely think he does deserve a shout. Few of you think that um, we can win. I'm seeing. I'll, I'll go through some of them here. Adhu Fati said three one. I believe with the way he's got that around, that would more than likely be to the home side. So he thinks Palace will win three uh, one. Innovate Boys thinks it'd be a two two draw. Gurpet Singh thinks we can win two one. Swearing Toddler, strange name, thinks it'd be a two two draw. Trevon Logia thinks two one to the Chelsea. And Tim Davies is going for a 1-1 one, one draw. So clearly a lot of you think that it will be a draw. Harsh Lahari as well. Fabregas as a can. Personally, I don't think he deserves to be on the side. Just the season that he has had has been absolutely awful. And I, I don't think it's worth giving him giving him much for a try anymore, if I'm honest with you. Once again, I'm really sorry about this. Uh, I don't understand where Louis has gone. I'm going to try and keep this going for as much as I can. And he wasn't able to answer. Okay. I believe his computer has more than likely stopped. Um, who do you guys think we should bring in in January? Obviously, I'm seeing a lot of comments with John Stones. Do you think that there's anyone attacking that we should bring in? And also, who would you like to see us bring back from loan? And do you think actually was the right decision? So go through your comments. Umar Amin, once again, I seem to always read your ones. How about a last chance for Bertrand Traore to see if he should be kept? Oh, I've lost it. Where did it go? Uh, to see if he should be kept or sent on loan. Once again, this January is going to be big. We might see a few youth players uh, have a go because we need to sort of like diminish that wage bill a little bit to see if we can bring in some more players. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of Ronaldo's and Pogba's. Realistically, that's not going to happen. Obviously, if it did, it would would be great. I'm seeing a lot about Yokohama as well, whether or not you guys actually think that is a curse and we should bring back Samsung, I don't know. Texera, obviously, he would be a quality signing. Our attack midfield has been incredibly poor. But then again, I think if we bring in a winger and play Willian in the middle, it could work out better. Because to me, Willian suits the middle better because he's not... Um, we haven't like necessarily 
got the best uh, the best midfield at the minute. Not like we used to with Massa. So I, I think Pedro could do a thing on the right, and he is sort of proving it on the odd game. Okay, a few, few dodgy ones like Bentner in here. Petr Cech, realistically, I don't think that would be happening anytime soon. Umar Amin. Well, I, I keep on reading your ones. Uh, Pogba recently linked with PSG. How about Verratti? Whether or not they will let go of Verratti, I don't know. Aha, we have a message from Louis. Okay. Apparently, his internet has had difficulty, so he should be on soon. Let's read some more of your comments. Rabio, obviously a youth player at PSG. We were apparently linked with him in the summer. He would be a good signing, but again, do we really need more youth players? Or do we need big names? We've got so many as it is. Uh, Andres Acosta says Akin Fenwa. Um, he's about as strong as Diego Costa, obviously a lot bigger. Um, I, I don't think he'd do much for us up front, but he might sell a few shirts. Uh, Charlie Austin. I don't know how he's done at QPR this season. If you guys can let me know in the comments how he's done. I've seen his name quite a bit. Uh, has he done quite well? Has he scored goals? Because obviously he had a great... Uh, 2014-15 season. So if he is still doing it at QPR, he might be a good shout. Uh, from Innov Innovate Boys, Pasalic is a starter at Monaco with five goals. Our midfield needs him and Van Hinkle. Definitely. Our midfield has possibly what been one of the most disappointing parts. Obviously, we're not scoring goals up front and our defence has been poor, but the fact that we have no creativity in the midfield, a lot starts there. Okay, um, Newcastle are apparently after Austin. I know we've not had the best of seasons, but we can fight off Newcastle for a player like Charlie Austin, definitely. I talked about Laporte. I think a lot of people now think that Varane won't happen. It's sort of been, sort of been something that we've been toying with for a few years now, and the fact that he's sort of gone into the first team, I don't think, don't think there's any talk of that. Josu. And Tantu says, bring back some of the lone players and the youth. That's as we were saying earlier. I don't know if you missed it. Me and Louis were saying that players like Moses and Louis, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Eat Here we are. Right, what have I missed? But um, I should be hosting. You, you, you're you're I've taking... Just been, yeah, I've, I, I've been panicking and just reading comments. Hopefully, I haven't done too badly. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, we'll have to watch you back. We'll have to watch you back. I don't know. Yeah. Leave it down in the comments. Has he done badly? And I'll read those. I'm watching you. Um, but anyway, where, where were we? What were we talking about? Um, Max? Uh, start the line-up for the game. Start the line-up? Okay. Yeah. Um, right, start the line-up. Uh, we were talking about two up top, weren't we? So two up top. Uh, I've loved, I've loved, this is really good. You were saying about how you want um, Bamford in there, wasn't you? Okay. Yeah, I think Patrick Bamford would... Um, it would make sense, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, th I think... But